Welcome to the Jaron Jarvis channel. I am Jaron Jarvis. Today, I would like to introduce to you, there is something strange going on with my dog. I've had Kavart since he was 2, or 2.5 years old, I can't remember exactly at what age he became officially mine. My former best friend bought him as a handbag dog, a Pomeranian, and whichever angle you look at him from he is no pom. Not sure what sort of mix is going on there but he is the most amazingly beautiful dog I have ever seen, but of course I would say that, he is my dog. Dot anyway, he outgrew her handbags at which point it was clear the little ball of fluff she had bought around a year earlier was some mad mongrel mix that simply looked like a pom as a puppy and this did not sit well with her as she wanted the perfect little floof ball to go with her Barbie image. The fact he went from a light cream color to bright ginger also played a part I'm sure. She stared neglecting him and since I lived in the apartment above her and was home a lot when she was out he started hanging out with me more and more so neither of us would be lonely. We became best buds, until the day came when she, with fake tears in her eyes, said she has done a lot of soul searching and had come to the conclusion that she could not take care of a dog with her busy schedule and it wasn't fair on Kavart and how she could see that we had bonded and how good I was with him etc etc. I obviously took Kavart and dumped that bitch as a friend as soon as that amazing mutt was firmly under my name at the vets, on the insurance and the microchip company so there was no taxi backsies attempted. So then it was me and Kavart, that was in 2003. We have gone through breakups, mine, and house moves, illnesses and injuries, also mine, and he is looking more handsome by the year, full and long orange coat, and I mean orange brighter than anything you've ever seen. Sweet hazel eyes with long ginger eyelashes and a plump little nose that's always twitching and looking for new scents and butts to get excited about. He's still small, just not handbag small, like a spaniel size I suppose but fluffy and round. He gets a fresh clean cut every spring, literally 10 mm buzz cut, to shed the weight of his massive winter coat and he always looks and acts like a little puppy with all the heavy and hot fur off his ridiculously massive fur is only good in winter and we both agree with this one cut a year policy. We've had long discussions through the years about what grooming is absolutely necessary and what is not. He hates grooming but agrees it is better not to have knots in his fur. He is over 17 years old and he looks like a dog fresh out of puppyhood. People always comment on it and he is very healthy which I take full credit for due to good diet and loads of exercise and love of course and he has been a normal dog, loving, chilled, proper funny little personality, cute, amazing, the best boy ever and so on. But what I am trying to get at is that in the 17 years I have had the pleasure of having Kavart in my life he has never acted particularly strange but that recently changed. It was on a normal evening walk, around the back of a residential development with really good walking paths, so we're trotting away when he suddenly stopped a little bit before a usual right turn in the path. He looked at me then turned around and started walking back, fast. And I kind of started calling for him but as soon as I had made the first noise he started running and I panicked, thinking he might get to the road and traffic before I can catch him and get him back on the lead so I sprinted after him and after a couple of minutes I managed to catch up with him, it was getting close to the road and I was so shocked and scared that he would just take off like that and I thought he might get hit by a car. I cried and admonished him but we walked back home same way we came. He had never ever left my side when we were on walks before, only far enough to sniff something good but always in eyesight so as soon as we are away from many major roads I take him off the lead and let him do his thing and I trusted him because he was always a good boy. I thought maybe he was getting old and senile, regardless how fresh he looked. Maybe his sight was getting poor and he got spooked by shadows and it upset me even more to think my little man is getting old so I kept him on the lead the next couple of days walking different routes and we had no incidents. Then came the third day and we are back at the same corner, there is a massive conifer hedge lining the side of the walking path so you cannot not see around it, and he stopped again, looked at me and turned around but this time he was on the lead so I stopped him because I did not see any reason why we would not walk the same route we usually walk due to some unknown whim of a possibly senile dog. I looked ahead and saw nothing but the path, 
the hedge and some light from the street lamp around the corner so I tugged on the lead and took another couple of steps when I felt him pulling hard on the lead. I turned around and see him looking kind of crazy. His eyes looked panicky and wide with a lot of the whites showing and he was pulling on the lead again and when I tell him, quite loudly, to calm down he tried to run again so I pulled him to a stop and then I heard something behind me. I saw two men walking out from behind the conifer hedge. Like they had been waiting there. They were dirty and looked like they were either high or drunk, but both were also very, very big and they were looking straight at me with eyes hungry and evil. One was laughing to the other, like he just cracked a joke I think I was the punchline too, they both had disgusting leers on their pockmarked faces and anyone with a vagina could tell they were trouble of the worst kind. It took me about a second and a half to register all this and then I turned around and legged it with Kavart in the opposite direction, as fast as our little legs would carry us, legs pumping as hard as I could, my breaths harsh and painful, it wasn't far to more populated areas so we got there within minutes and when I saw people milling near the back of the shops I finally spun around to chance a look of course they were nowhere to be seen. I had to sit down on the ground, I was feeling dizzy from the sprint, the adrenaline and the fright I'd had, and if I am honest I felt like I might have puked if hadn't sat down so there was that too. Kavart came straight up to me, not even out of breath FFS, and just looked me in the eyes as I am heaving and huffing, trying to get my breath back whilst still not attracting too much attention from passers-by. His eyes, he was trying to tell me something but I felt, I don't know, a little freaked out, like I was looking into human eyes, no that's not right, not human but perhaps like an intelligent species. And yes, of course I know dogs are an awesome species and they are super intelligent already but this was different from anything I have ever seen in a dog, his eyes looked the same as they always had but there was an understanding, or depth or something in there that made me feel scared and in awe at the same time. My little old man had known there was danger, he let me know and tried to get me away and you bet your ass I was the proudest mama in the world. I don't know how he got this sixth sense but that was what I was sure it was. Seems stupid to even add this as it seems a pretty obvious choice but after that near miss I listened to him if he wanted to change directions on our walks and added a small but effective Stanley blade to my little walking pouch I brought with me for doggy bags and the odd treat. I felt safe with it along for my walks. Wish I could say we had a foolproof method to discover danger and avoid it, and we did I think as our walks were uneventful for weeks, and I started to forget, but this morning something horrific happened and then something incredible happened, I think. It is dark in the mornings here, I live outside a small town in England, and I take Kavart out at the country park around the corner from my house before the sun rises most mornings and we get by with a head torch as well as a hand torch for me and a flashing lead collar for him. Whilst it can be a little scary sometimes because it is almost completely black for parts of the park there is hardly ever another soul around, apart from the odd night fishers camping out by the riverfront and another possible early dog walker and we all know each other so it is, was, a safe place. There is also absolutely loads of wildlife like rabbits, foxes, herons, squirrels, moles as well as numerous other critters and it is a peaceful time for us both to wake up gently and get our fresh air and exercise before the world around us starts. We were bundled up against the winter cold, well I was bundled up in winter coat, hat and mittens and cavart's fur was thick and long and fully grown and he looked like a small orange barrel with tiny little legs poking out underneath him, patting away pure comedy to watch and it never failed to put a smile on my face. We walked through the woods and paths around the small lakes in the country park when Kavart suddenly started acting strange again, we were under a dark canopy of trees and it was almost pitch black apart from my lights. He kept looking around and stopping, then started to walk fast in one direction only to stop again and walk in another direction and I could tell he was getting anxious so I scan around with my head torch and flashlight but apart from the trees casting spooky shadows I couldn't see anything out of the ordinary, my free hand still went to my pouch to grab the Stanley blade nestled at the bottom, nearly forgotten. My heart was racing, I could hear my booming heartbeat in my ears with each tentative step I took, I tried not to make too much noise, 
Kavart was on the move so I followed him as he started heading in a direction he seemed to feel certain about, through some bushes off to the side of the path but it doesn't take us very far before he stops again and backed up, almost backing into me. I scanned the head torch around but I still couldn't see anything, or anyone so when he started moving sharply to the right again I scanned around behind me, whilst still trying to follow Kavart as best I could in the dark uneven woods. And then, I saw them. There were bad men in the woods today. At first I frantically tried to find their dogs, I thought if they are dog walkers I am safe, but there were no dogs and I knew I was in trouble so I tried to make a run for it in the direction Kavart had started moving but one of the men grabbed me by my ankle from behind and pulled me to the ground, hard, the wind was knocked from my lungs, I scrambled to get up and slashed wildly behind me with the Stanley blade and heard a curse as I connect with something that felt soft. I caught sight of Kavart a little ahead of me and tried to run towards him but I was tackled to the ground by a second man and at this point I am panicking, with the weight on his body and my shocked lungs I couldn't breathe, started to feel dizzy. I thought of Kavart, I hoped they wouldn't hurt him. I lost the Stanley blade. I heard them start shouting and whooping and I was roughly anked to my feet by the man who tackled me, he twisted my arms around my back and held them hard, at least I could breathe again with his fucking weight off me. I heard Kavart bark. My head torch was hanging around my neck after the tackle and it wobbled around to show me what I thought were two or three more men and my blood froze when I heard the things they were saying to each other, it was making me want to cry for my mum. I was so scared I nearly peed my pant, only the anger I felt held that back in I think. They were going to rape me. Probably murder me too by the look of it. And no one was around to stop them. One of them stepped forward, my bobbing now neck torch sometimes illuminated parts of his face, it was one of the men I ran from weeks ago by the conifers. His eyes looked hollow and hungry, evil, he had disgustingly rotted, black teeth and his rank breath wafted over me as he grabbed my hair and yanked my head back, I cried out in pain, all the while he was laughing and talking to his buddies about all the depravities he had planned for my poor body. He spit as he spoke and some of it ended up in my mouth as I was trying to catch my breath and made me want to throw up. He suddenly drew back one arm and punched my stomach hard, my arms were released and I doubled over with the pain and shock and he immediately jabbed his fist up toward my face and nearly knocks me out with a dirty punch on my jaw, only luck had it that he hit me at the wrong angle in the dark so I didn't pass out. He hurt his hand and I fell away from him seeing stars, my vision started narrowing and I tried to scream before I passed out but the sound I heard next kept me very much awake. It was a terrifying sound, like a roar and a loud tearing sound all at the same time, it reverberated through my body, ears protesting in pain, it made my insides shake and my heart nearly stopped from the terror I felt, and for a second everything around me also seemed to stop. Where is Kavart? Then there was a flash, I could not see from where but somewhere close behind me, and for the briefest moment the woods were illuminated by this incredibly bright light and I saw there were four men, all in front of me, one bleeding from his eye, must have cut that fucker with the Stanley blade, another with his belt and jeans already undone, anticipating, their faces looked frozen in terror. The next moment everything was dark again and aside from a whooshing sound it was quiet, I felt a warm rain starting and shake my head as I try to get my bearings. I need to find a source of light from somewhere other than the damn torch around my neck which I tried to steady but my hands were too shaky and slippery, then I staggered to my feet and started to hobble toward the small break in the trees before the men could catch me again. My mind was racing, my head was humming, my teeth might have cracked in several places and my stomach felt like I might shit and piss blood for the rest of eternity, and I knew I was panicking but I just had one word in my head, run. Before I got all the way to the clearing I hear a bark. Just a small, normal Kavart bark and I abruptly stopped, even though it seems absurd, I was fleeing for my life and needed to get to safety yet when I heard that bark my fear just went away and my mind started processing the fact that not only were there no footsteps crashing through the forest behind me, no one in pursuit, there were no noises at all. Nothing. 
just me crashing through the branches and bushes. I spun around to see him following me, all happy like with that goofy little smile on his face and I saw in the now very much dying light from my neck torch that he was wet, from the rain of course, it has almost stopped now. I saw his little eyes and crooked my head toward the park entrance, because this made me feel normal because this is what we usually do when we're ready to head back home, on normal days when I don't nearly die horrifically. He saw the gesture and we tore off toward the car I left just off the entrance road, the bouncing neck torch at that point giving up completely leaving us running in near darkness but there was just enough moonlight to carry our speedy feet safely back. When we got to the car I sunk down on the ground behind it and cried, I heaved in large gulping breaths of air whilst my stomach was burning from the pain, I cried so hard I started throwing up or maybe this was because I was scared shitlier saw the sucker punch in the gut, I mean either way I was puking on myself on the road at 5.30am by the entrance to a country park and I did not care one fucking iota, I clutched my amazing animal close to me and cried like a baby and he just let me howl into his fur like a patient parent. At that point my brain started sort of trying to work normally again and I wondered how the hell I got away. What on earth happened to those men in the woods? Why did I feel safe and stop the moment I heard Kavart's little bark? I decide this is not the time to look too deep into it and just get our asses back home. Only, when I opened the rear door and the interior light came on at the same time as Kavart jumped into the boot I saw he was covered in what looked. It looked like blood. Drenched actually. I looked down on my hands and I saw they are covered too, as was the rest of my body. Everything was covered in wet sticky blood and again my brain was trying to catch me up on overtime, the things it saw in the woods, the warm rain, the terrifying sound and that flash. Nope, not ready, my brain told me to go home. I looked at Kavart again and I know he did something. I sat on a dog towel as I drove home silently, looking in the rear view mirror where I met Kavart's size again, thank god it was still so early no one is out. We managed to get from the car to my house without being seen by nosy neighbors, I headed straight for the shower and despite his hatred for grooming Kavart didn't even protest like he usually does but instead let me shower all the blood off him and myself at the same time, we sat in that bathtub for a long time before the water ran clear again. It took 4 towels and about 15 minutes to get him somewhat dry enough to let loose in the house. I get into my PJs. Message my boss to tell him I won't be in today and take some painkillers, hospital wasn't an option until my brain had caught up and I knew what was up. I started hearing sirens around 7.30, when the regular dog walkers arrive in the country park, and I had a perverse sense of curiosity wash over me, I wanted to know what happened. Now there was daylight and several other people there of course helped. My jaw looked like it should absolutely fucked, so I wrapped myself up in a big scarf to cover the damage and limped my way down to the park on foot with a still damp cavart on his lead, my body was so sore I could barely get my legs to move so it was slow progress. Absolute carnage met us when we get there almost an hour later, police, crime technicians in white overalls and emergency service personnel were everywhere. So were the gackers and I recognized a fair few of them. I asked some of the regular dog walkers I know, who were huddled together, what was happening and they told me Ruby's owner, people go by their dog's name plus owner around here, found some small bits of body parts in the woods, the whole area was saturated, with blood dripping from the tree branches onto her head and they said it looked like an animal as big as a bear or mountain lion had ripped at least two people to pieces. Or perhaps a bomb had gone off. They were uncertain at that point but what they all agreed on was that people had died very violently and the only thing the police had been able to find was a small Stanley knife which could not have done the damage they had heard of, they all agreed on that. I stood there in shock for a moment, my brain finally catching up. Those men were slaughtered in a way I cannot even fathom and not a sound was made, and it happened within less than a split second unless I somehow lost time but I don't think I did as I feel like I remember every single terrifying heartbeat in those woods. That warm rain. I looked at Kavart. He looked back at me with his goofy little smile. He did this. I don't know how but he did. There is something strange going on with my dog, and I have never loved him more.